Dear everyone, Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wish you good morning or good evening, wherever you are, whenever you are, and wherever you are, inshallah. And uh, today, uh, in this very cold weather again in UK, we'll be talking about our third episode in Fadfada 5 to 5. 2023. Today we'll be talking about uh, the earthquake in Turkey and Syria on one side, as well as uh, my accountability for all of you. Since this is my first trip to the field, especially Jordan and Turkey. In my introduction, the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, northwest of Syria, it looks like uh, the most devastating disaster affecting this region, which is affecting the lives of more than 20 million people inside Turkey and more inside Syria. When I visited Antakya two weeks ago, but on the 14th, nearly less than two weeks ago, I called it the city of dead or the city of death. I called it the devastated, devastated, destroyed, empty city. I called it the city of ghosts because the people living in Antalya, Antakya have left already and the rest were buried under the rubble. No movement, no life, no beings there. Even we could not be able to recognize animals and birds during our visit. This was the magnitude of the earthquake which hit uh, Syria and Turkey, which hit Syria and Turkey, and claimed the life up to now of more than 50,000 people, but still a lot of people under the rubble. I have never seen Scenes like this anywhere else in my travel over the last 40 years, apart from tsunami. Tsunami, when we were there, there was nothing. In Banda Aceh, the wave came from the ocean and took everybody in the city to the ocean. More than a quarter million people have died at that time. This is my introduction today to you. In 57 seconds, the lives of millions of people, the dreams of millions of people, the hopes of millions of people, the wealth of millions of people dashed, vanished, finished. So we have to be prepared for our destiny which might end in a second. Our life could start by a second, last for a second, and end in a second. This is life compared to the life to come. This is life compared to the life to come. I divided my talk today to you into nine points. First of all, how can we seize opportunities? and understand the philosophy of the idea of the trip, this trip, 17 days. We talked about waste of resources. We talked about transparency and public and secret sadaqa of the people while I was traveling. We talked about the salaries and the administration expenses for charitable organization. 
We talked about the events and the, the visits that I have done, I've made in Jordan and in Turkey, and my visit to Antakya, which I was talking about it earlier on. Then the capabilities and the abilities, the difference between capabilities and the abilities or the abilities and the resources that we have. We talked about also good luck and prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then my message to the young people. The big ask now is why did I call this talk account statement or my accountability? Very simple and very clear and very profound. Any one of us who claim that he or she is a public figure, he or she are working on the public domain, have to be accountable to the public by the second, by the minute, by the day, by the week, by the month, by the year, by the life. That's why I said my account and my accountability to you because people consider me to be one of those people who work in the public domain. Seize the available opportunities. I was scheduled to travel to Turkey in February to attend the conference about civil society organizations and civil society sector, speak there, then to have a visit to northwest of Syria for about five days. While I was having a Zoom talk about Zakat culture with a Jordanian think tank uh, organization called Arab Thought Forum, I thought I have the opportunity, I'm in the region, I'm going to Istanbul, why don't I jump on a plane? to go to Amman, which is about two hours by plane. So I have to create a program for myself. I have to change my Zoom call, my Zoom lecture, into face-to-face -face lecture. I have to find somebody to sponsor my ticket and my stay in Amman, in Jordan. I found one of our organization, Islamic Leaf, wanted me to visit their offices. So they paid for the ticket. They paid for the accommodation. That's why instead of having a Zoom conference call, Alhamdulillah became face-to-face -face and visit to field offices. And then after that, we managed with a good relationship with the Jordanian Red Crescent to have another extra two face-to-face -face talks about challenges facing the humanitarian sector as well as maturity of organization. Hear the message to the young people. Try to create an opportunity for you. Try to seize an opportunity in front of you. You are halfway through your achievement. You can carry on with more if you can connect with others. So this was the opportunity that we took. But this happened how? When you have good relationship with the organization that you used to work for or with other organizations. If you don't have good relationship, nobody will host you. Nobody will pay for your ticket or for your accommodation. And here, we must take a serious stand with finding alternative solution, or alternative way. I think the translation of these few slides is from Google. So bear with me. So the earthquake happened on the 6th of February. My visit to northwest of Syria was canceled. Then the conference was canceled. So I have to create another opportunity. So in Jordan, alhamdulillah, we managed to deliver three lectures, four meetings 
with Islamic leaf staff and visiting five cities Amman, Erbid, Zaatari, Mafraq, and uh, Mafraq, and uh, what is the number one? Number four, uh, Mafraq, and uh, Ramtha to encourage the staff. So instead of staying in Amman, we'll visit five places. So what to do after do after the sixth of February, no conference in Jordan and in, in Istanbul, and no visit to northwest of Syria. We have to think again to create another opportunity. One of the thoughts is why don't we visit Antakya to see the extent of the damage in Hatay? Is number one. Number two, why don't we? create two coordination meetings between the organizations who are working in this area. Alhamdulillah, with the good relationship with other organizations as well, like Violet, the Syrian organization used to work uh, its office in Antakya to organize a visit to Antakya. Second is to organize two coordination meetings on the Zoom with other groups. With a good relationship with another Syrian organization called Ata. So, the good relationship with Arab Thought Forum in Jordan, Jordanian Red Crescent in Jordan, Ata in Istanbul, as well as a Violet in Antakya. We managed to create another activity and another opportunity. Alhamdulillah. So, instead of going or sitting standstill, or canceling my trip and going back to UK. No, we have to do something. And alhamdulillah, during my stay in Istanbul, I had three live interview on Al Jazeera Mubashir and TRT, Arabic, the Turkish Arabic, about the earthquake, about the earthquake. All young people, you're always rebellious. And my message to you now, good relationship, good service to others, and good reputation of yourself will open all the doors for you at the difficult time where you cannot believe that the door will be open for you. So instead of visiting Amman and Istanbul, so there's five cities in Jordan and three cities in Turkey, which is Istanbul, Adana, as well as Antakya. This is how can you seize opportunity or you create opportunity for yourself. Waste of resources. There was a discussion when I was in Islamic Relief about a word called Hadr. Hadr. Hadr is waste. And Hadr and corruption is back to back, like a syndrome. Corruption leads to hadr, and hadr leads to corruption. Or waste to lead, uh, corruption leads to waste, and waste leads to corruption. What are the types, different types of waste, which hadr? Waste of effort. When effort is made inappropriately. Waste of time. When delaying, procratizing, and postponing the work that you need to do now to another time. Becoming lazy, waste of ideas, opinion, and advice when not listening to others, only listening to yourself. Waste of human resources by mismanaging them. You have got very talented people, but you cannot manage them. Wasting of money by making quick, wrong, not very well studied decisions or appointing friends and relatives to run the business for yourself because they are their friends or relatives. Or because you are, and or I am, a dictator. I don't listen to anybody. Or because of my ignorance as a leader. This kind of things lead to waste, which is a part of corruption. What about corruption? Corruption always leads to waste. 
Corruption has many manifestations, including those I mentioned earlier in the waste of resources. Corruption and waste represent one syndrome connected to one to cancer cells. The cancer cells is our body called bad moral, bad morality. This bad moral behavior will jump up when our immune system or the immunity of the heart and the mind and the soul will become weak, when our iman become less, our yaqeen become less, and so on. This is the corruption uh, waste syndrome. But you see, brothers and sisters, we often explain corruption in an institution as what? As financial corruption, like theft, like fraud, or moral corruption. When we have bad relationship, or what do you call it, yani, dishonest relationship with the other sex, or harassing, young children, young women, or even young women harassing men, like the woman of Yusuf, alayhi salam. So I have about Yusuf. When they were actually harassing Yusuf and asking him to do uh, yani, the unlawful things with his uh, lady. Corruption has many aspects other than the ones that I mentioned previously. So let me announce to you and to myself that corruption and waste of resources are societal, moral, and behavioral crime, contradicting all the values and faith that are punishable, and they are punishable by the civil and divine law. This is actually, I'm sorry, I'm reading the Haji Google, Haji Google, yes, Haji Google translation. Another way, Corruption and uh, waste is a crime. By everything, civil law and heavenly law as well, which is Sharia. Ah. The third point on my talk today is what we call the Islamic transparency. This was a provocative question mentioned to me when I was visiting an organization called Ata by the head of finance. You know what he said? He said to me, those Muslim charities saying that there's no transparency because of the Sadaqa Mahfiya, the hidden Sadaqa. They should not declare the income and the expenditure. What I said, on my dead body. This is my response to him because he was antagonizing me. If we deal with the public money, everything has to be up to the standard and transparent. And this is a part of the Islamic theology and the Islamic understanding of Sharia. This only note in the charity. We are dealing with political organization, social organization, economical organization, financial organization, and others. Transparency, there's nothing in the public domain called secret information, unless this information is classified by security or by the intelligence. But for the public money, the public fund, the public behavior, it, everything should be transparent. Let me give you examples from the history of Muslims and Islam. And the examples are very well known to us of Sayyidina Umar, the Khalifa, the second Khalifa of Muslims. He was giving khutbah in the mosque and he was wearing a Number four is the expenses and the salaries. 
the expenses and the salaries. Listen to this from me. I say it from my experience. There's no full-time job without salary. And there's no achievement without administrative expenses. I say it again. This was discussion was with the relief workers at the time of the earthquake. There's no full-time job without salaries, and there's no achievement without administrative expenses. Except if somebody rich, very rich, well off, does not want to have salary. But he has to work according to the job description and to be committed to the job. Not to be arrogant, not to be talking wish-washy because he is rich. If he can do that, we can give him the job without salary. But to be very honest, I don't accept this. If he was working with me, I'll tell him, take the salary and do whatever you want with it. To be accountable to me. Because I give you a job, and in your job, you have to be paid. And this Khulafa al muslimin were paid, and the Umara al muslimin were paid at that time. People sometimes say that we don't take money from the zakat fund. It's a, it's a part of, I mentioned it many times, of propaganda to fundraise. Here, my sons and my daughters, what can I say? Allah said in the Holy Quran, Allah has appointed people to collect zakah, to give zakah, to register zakah, to invest in zakah, and all this. And he have to be paid. You are not more holy than the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people might say, oh, it has to be the Khalifa. We don't have Khalifa at the moment. And we have plenty of problems, global problems, from Rohingya to uh, Uyghur to Palestine to Yemen to Iraq to Syria. And now, as you can see, it, to Africa, South Sudan, to Sudan, to Somalia, to Kenya, to Ethiopia, all this. There's no Khalifa. What, what shall we do? Hey, young people, wake up and get out of your ghettos and be realistic. This is number one. Number two, as I mentioned, don't choose this kind of zero administration. No, no administration take from Zakah as a fundraising tool. And if anyone tells you that, Tell them it is a fundraising tool used to be used by some individuals in certain organizations. It's not acceptable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala institutionalized zakat to enable us to build a state based on an institution building. So salaries and the administration are have to be paid for the people who work for the state, work for the church as well. Let me go to the next slide. I mentioned, somebody said that let the government collect it. I tell them, yes, fine, no problem. But we don't have Islamic government, unfortunately. We have either secular, uh, communist, socialist, liberal, or corrupt government, or dictatorship government, to collect the zakat. Cannot be accepted. Cannot be accepted. So let us empower local organization and make regulation on them of how to raise fund, how to spend the fund, how to be accountable to the fund. 
The point number five, my activities in these two countries. As I mentioned earlier, I spent 17 days, 408 hours, visit two countries, Turkey and Jordan, eight cities, Amman, Ramsa, uh, Erbid, uh, Zaatari, uh, Mafraq, Istanbul, Antakya, and Adana. In Jordan, I gave three lecture, public lecture, four meetings with Islamic Leaf staff, three public articles published in new national newspaper, and many interaction with right holders, which is the poor people. In Turkey, three live interview on national uh, TV, like TRT, or international like Al Jazeera. The two meetings with young people and lectures to them. One meeting with Islamic Leaf staff, visiting local Turkish, yani quite 19 activities in 15 days. And this is Barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Barakah from Allah. Baraka from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 19 activities in 15 days. If you consider the, the days of travel are not a part of the activities. My visit to Antakya, I mentioned something about it earlier. We organized this trip visit with local Syrian organization called Violet. And as I mentioned before, I cannot forget the scenes of the emptiness and the smell of death and the vacuum which is only filled by ghosts. And the amount of rubble from buildings and from homes, whether two, three stories homes or 15, 16 story buildings, unfortunately. In 57 seconds, the life of those people in these 11 areas, not only Antakya, 11 districts in, in, in Turkey ended, unfortunately, or changed. The rich become poor. The one who has a house to live in become homeless. People used to live in their cars for days in the middle of the cold weather. With no clothes, no, 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 no proper clothes and no blankets, afraid to go back to their buildings. I saw families were in this on the street, waiting for the beloved ones to be taken out from underneath the rubble. Men and women, young men and young women, and old women as well, waiting. Even one of them was carrying a blanket in his hand. Said, what is this for as a coffin? Said, no, it's not a coffin. My sister's there and I'm waiting to take her and I'm afraid that when they bring her out, her aura might be exposed to everybody. That I have to cover her body. Was so eager to cover the aura of his sister or his, his this sister. The destruction in Turkey is unimaginable. It might cost the government tens and tens of billions of euros to recover. This is for the construction. And for the rebuilding the economy, it would be the same because this area has been affected by the earthquake, made 10 to 11 percent of the national economy of Turkey and produce $19 billion every year from agriculture, from industry, and from tourism. And now there's a lot of expenses to maintain those people who are doing nothing, but they're sheltered, food, medical care, and giving dress and, and, and sheltering them. So my advice to all of you young people, don't spend all what you have raised in food and water. Keep a good amount of it for reconstruction, for rebuilding the local economy. 
whether inside Syria, which is not many people know the extent of the damage inside Syria, as well as in Turkey. So don't spend all your money now. Keep raising your fund. Unfortunately, when the camera leaves the scene, nobody will give you any money. Yesterday or the first day, Europe and America were talking about Ukraine. Became number one for the first anniversary of the Ukraine-Russian war. So most of the international media now are shifting their attention into Ukraine crisis because Ukraine for Europe and America is like a national security. Number seven is a very, very important point. Ability, my ability, and capabilities. Capabilities is what you have of resources. Okay? Like resources that you have. You can use. But ability is what I have and what I can do. When I travel these 17 days, I realized that I am not the man who started 40 years ago. My speed is not the same. My fatigue is not the same. My physical fitness is not the same. And I could be a burden on the people, especially in this area where everybody is running, 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 running. It's my ability. I have to address it and I have to publicly saying it. Saying it. So what my role should be as a man at this age and to anyone else at this age. Senior people have more time to think and create ideas for the community. Teaching young people, give them the direction, pass your experience to them, raise the public awareness of the community, write the history of our communities, reviewing the community moral values, visit the culture again, and remove the bad cultures and the philosophy of thinking, motivate the young people and build their capacity. You can do a lot, but not the physical one anymore. While for the younger generation, and this message for them, you should become the executives of the organization that can manage the organization. You can travel, you can run, you can stand up, you can shout, you can help, you can build. Follow up the work plan and work process and procedures and play all the other executive roles. So from my 17 days trip in Jordan and in Turkey, I admit that I cannot do what I used to do when I was a young man. And this is the message for the people at my age and they're still sitting on the seat of leadership, executive leadership for years, for years. For years, I tell them haram and the haram and the haram give the chance to the younger people. Because no matter how much experience you have, you have to play a different role to utilize your experience and give the executive role to the younger generation. This is the point number seven. Point number eight, let me get you into success stories. Success in our life yani, is based on what? We have to refer back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's number one. We have to have a clear and sincere intentions. Number two. For the sake of Allah. We have to have a properly written plan and program. Number three. The reasoning. Number four. We have to be flexible. You know, the flexibility I showed you when I changed it or we changed it, my travel from a Zoom for Jordan to a face-to-face -face meeting, then produce all this. Then what happened was the cancellation of the conference, cancellation of the visit to Syria. Yeah. Being flexible when facing challenges. 
and there's no harm of changing our course of action if needed when necessary. This is A, B, C, D, E. Number E, having friends and partners to help you. If I did not have good friends in Jordan, we could not have had those three talks and the visits. If we could not have these friends in Istanbul, could not have organized the jet trip to Antakya and the two coordination meeting as well. Always making prayer for whom? For the people that you are trying to serve, trying to empower, trying to help. At the end of my journey, and this is for all of you, I was so exhausted. And for the first time, I was praying for Allah to be upgraded from economy to business class. So I was in my wheelchair, and the man took me to the lady. She gave me, I said, I was at a uh, time. Oh Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah. But unfortunately, she gave me seat, which is 20D. I said, oh my God, Allah did not listen to my dua. Then the wheelchair young man came and pushed me to the gate. At the gate, I was still praying. Ya Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah. Then I was observing closely. The man was holding my boarding. Then he cut it into half and gave him the other. I said, oh my God, khalas, finished. Finished. Soon he was pushing me to the gate. The employee of Turkish Airlines said, oh, sir, come back. This was like a kiss of life for me. You have been upgraded. I said, Alhamdulillah. And on the plane, I prayed to Raqqa to thank Allah for that. Because I needed it. Sometime in journeys like this, if you find some relief worker sitting in a business class, you start cursing him or her. You don't know how many hours he used to work, how old is he, how old is she, how much trouble. But Alhamdulillah, it came for free. This is actually one of the success stories that I had at the end of my journey. There's another incident happened to us, which is a little bit funny. I traveled with somebody called Abdurrahman, a young man from Istanbul to Adana, and then from Adana to Antakya by car, about three, four hours by car. Then we changed the day of travels. And we went on the 13th, which was, I think, uh, Monday. Then we finished our visit on the 14th, and they came back. Our sub flight was supposed to be 9 o'clock in the evening. We came back early. It was 6 o'clock. We tried to catch the flight, which was the 6.45. The, 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 the airport was full of people being evacuated to leave this area and to go to Istanbul. Into other cities. And Abdurrahman went, because when he was changing the ticket before we travel, he was half asleep. You know what happened? The man, the Turkish airline employee, told him, Sir, you don't have booking. Your booking not on 14th of February, it's on 14th of March. He said, Oh my God. Here we go again. Alhamdulillah, we composed ourselves. No screaming, no shouting, nothing. Because this is barakah from Allah. But the man told them, I will help you. Alhamdulillah, he gave us two seats on the 6.45 flight. Another hamd to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَسَى أَن تَكْرَوْ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Not only that. The Turkish airline later on, two, three days afterwards, Consider us a part of those big evacuees which are actually moving out from the city and they refund our tickets. So we traveled for free. Alhamdulillah. 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 My message to the young people, to conclude, my message is 
or young, capable, promising, more powerful people who are able to build the future of our societies and nations, I presented to you the above mentioned points to create this discussion at the beginning of 2023, after my first field visit. So let me remind you and you remind me of the following principles. First of all, establish the principle of transparency and make it compelling duty upon whom? Everyone who is working in the public domain. This is number one. Never start working in any area without having a clear plan and a designed road map to achieve your objectives. Number three, be flexible in your work and prepare alternative as well as contingency plan to overcome any challenges you face. Number four, always keep very strong and diverse relationship with others. Very strong and diverse relationship with others. Number five, having a credible, you yourself have to create your credibility and your integrity. Having a credible, you have to have a credible integral character and the very well known history through what? Through your community services and achievement, service for others. When you deal with public fund, this number six, deal with it. And this is the fund for orphans and widows. Number seven, learn from the Turkey Syrian earthquake that 57 seconds was enough to end the life of many thousands, to destroy the future of many millions and change the, 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 the discourse of the life in this area, which was nearly 1,000 square kilometer in Turkey. Number eight, we should review to the people who are very expert. We must review the definitions of terminologies and rewrite them again according to what? Our moral values, faith, culture, philosophy of thinking, and religion. We thank the people who made these definitions, but we need to make our own definition. Because what? Because we have the knowledge, we have the experience, and we have the right to do that. Number nine, young people invest our resources in doing the following. You know, if you have resources, we have to invest some of it in doing that. A, research studies. Unfortunately, most of our organizations do not believe in research studies. Analysis, reviewing, discrediting, and confirming the reliability of what you are doing. They will get out of Invest in advocacy and supporting human rights. Invest in studying correcting and rewriting the history, the false history which has been written before. Number D, building bridges with everybody. As I mentioned to you, building bridges, building partnership, building coalitions. Number E, establishing and supporting think tank institutions. We do not have think tank. We do not have think tank. Or at least we do not have credible think tank institution. Investing in building future leadership from whom? From among the young children, the young people, the young men and women. Investing in building credible community media platform, not platform of media for fundraising only. Credible media platform for awareness raising and the education. Very funny to say, number H, invest in drama. 
in arts and literature because sometimes drama will become more powerful than the speech of the sheikh in the mosque as sometime mentioned by late sheikh al-qaradawi about one of the drama uh, its name was al-haq mutawalli he was dealing with uh, polygamy in a, in a, in a, in a funny and in, in a co comic way and he was praising the star at that time drama is very powerful powerful tool to let us understand the history know the history uh, have knowledge and all these sort of things number i investing in building civil society organization civil society sector we cannot function in the 21st century without having powerful civil society sector having strong and independent civil society organization our success should be based on good and sincere intention for sake of allah reasoning ناخذ بالاسباب you cannot just become habulli babulli and that's it reasoning feasibility studies then we can pray to allah with one hand you study you make research you make feasible study and with the other hand you make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you success number 10 empowering women and young people as succession planning now i'm at the age of whatever i am now over 70. who's going to carry on during my term in office i have to prepare the second generation to take the leadership number 11 we should create new policies new policies we and procedures for emergency response rehabilitation development and empowerment and let me explain to you number 12. we had a discussion when i was in adana with young man who was with us on the screen Ahmed al Sheikh. He was in, he was talking from Idlib and me and Abdurrahman from uh, Adana. And we developed these points for a humanitarian response. Subhanallah, this young intelligent man wrote them better than what we have been discussing. Thank you, Ahmed al Sheikh, and he's with us on the listening to now. And I hope that one day he'll be far more better than all of us. It's necessary, well, that's what he said in Arabic. Then we translated it in, into English. It's necessary to clarify the concepts and nature of humanitarian stroke emergency work globally. Listen to these points, please, carefully. Removing rubbles, supporting vehicles with fuel, and supporting rescue teams is a relief work extracting the affected people from under the rubble is a relief work supporting medical personnel and supporting hospitals with all supplies equipment and devices is a relief work real advocacy for people is a relief work Coordination, communication, and networking between an institution and organization is a relief work. Honest, real, and informative advocacy media campaign is a relief work. Putting pressure on governments and humanitarian institutions is a relief work. Reconstruction is a relief work. Family, economic, and the community empowerment is a relief work. Mental health and helping the affected families is a relief work. Rehabilitation of youth, cadres, and raising local capabilities is a relief work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven points. This was on Monday 13 on a WhatsApp meeting between Adana and Idlib and Ahmad Sheikh was the one who was picking us 
picking our brain or taking our brain or yani or exciting us to write these 11 points keep keep writing keep thinking keep developing young people keep putting your ideas on the table the people who started before us were not better than us but we have to record to write to comprehend to classify to revisit all our thoughts to so one day somebody like Ahmad Sheikh and the others will be the future leaders, inshallah. And this is what we call succession planning. We cannot become the leaders forever. Forever we serve. Forever we live, but we cannot become forever we lead. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Jazakumullah khair. All of you, if anybody has a question or a statement, maybe anything on the on the chat, sister uh, uh, Aya. Aya. Ma fi ya doctor. Is any kind of topic that you can talk about? Or Anybody want to ask any question? Anybody want to make any comment? Anybody want to criticize me? I have no problem. In Arabic or English, I have no problem. Khalas? Okay. Shukran, shukran. Thank you. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair, Ahmad Abu Rish. Jazakumullah khair, Ahmad Abu Rish. Jazakumullah khair, Ahmad al-Sheikh and the others, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.